G'day everyone, hope you're doing great. One of the most common issues with Hoya 4 for new players is that there is so much going on. The UI can be pretty confusing and hard to follow, so today that's what we're going to cover. But firstly, if you enjoy this video and find it helpful, please consider a like and a subscribe. It would really help me keep bringing these guides to you, and let me know in the comments if you prefer light mode or dark mode, and why is it dark mode. I've also got a bonus tip lined up near the end of the video, so be sure to stick around for that. To start off, we'll run you through the information bar at the top of your screen. In the top left here, just next to your nation's flag, you have your political power, or PP. It represents your government's ability to command your nation and allows you to undertake a whole range of diplomatic actions, such as electing ministers to your cabinet, to boost your research and economy, as well as electing military leaders. Another vital use of PP is your ability to make in-game decisions, which we will cover in a bit. Overall, this is super important, so pay attention to this, and managing it well can be the difference between a slow start and a successful world conquest. In general, if you have some there, go ahead and use it. Just next to the PP, you can see your nation's stability and war support. These reflect your people's support for you, the government, and their appetite for war. Low figures in either of these boxes can result in strikes, mutiny in your armed forces, and huge debuffs to your economy and military capability. Conversely, keeping these high can give you great boosts to give you an edge over your enemies. These are also super important, and you'll find yourself balancing these a bit throughout your playthroughs. Next to that again, you'll see the line of little green men and a number. This is your manpower, and arguably one of the most important things to keep track of. It tells you how many people are currently available to be trained in your armed forces. This includes your army, navy, air force, and your territory garrisons. If this hits zero, you are up shit creek in a barbed wire canoe. Don't worry though, you can increase this in your government and laws, which we'll cover soon. To the right of that, you'll see your factory count, which consists of your total civilian and military factories available, as well as your dockyards. Again, I'll go into more detail on your industry in a future video. This number in itself isn't too important to worry about, but it's a pretty good indicator of the industrial might of your nation and how you're going. Continuing along, you have your current fuel stockpile. The number shown above the red and green bar indicates how many days until your nation's fuel tank is full or empty. Green means it's filling up, red means it's draining. When the number reaches zero, you're fresh out of fuel. You can trade oil from another nation to fix this, as well as researching into fuel techs, building synthetic refineries, and conquering territories which will give you extra fuel gain. Next to that is your logistics fulfillment bar, also called supply. 100% is good. If it's below that magic number, you can actually hover over this to see how you're failing to get supply to your troops. I'll cover supply in more depth in a separate video, but usually if you put a couple of factories on trains and trucks at the start of the game, you should have plenty of supply without running into issues. Both your logistics and fuel storage are vital to keep an eye on when you're at war, as if you run out of either, your troops will suffer pretty significant penalties. Next, you have your convoy count. These are basically merchant ships which transport troops across the seas, ship them supplies, allow you to trade resources, as well as give and receive land leases. Overall, they're a key part of any playthrough, so don't forget to put dockyards on them. It's worth mentioning too that convoys, trains and trucks aren't physical units that you need to move about. Think of them more as a resource and your logistics usage is the demand for that resource. Also, just a reminder that if you're finding this helpful, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions at all about what we've gone over today, please put them down in the comments and I'll answer every single one. <laughs> okay, back to the toolbar at the top of your screen. So now we're up to your command power and army, navy, and air force experience. These are all important, but generally the big ones to keep an eye on are your command power and army XP. Command power is used to recruit new generals, hire commanders in your officer corps, and execute operations in the field. You can also use it to send an attaché to a nation that's currently at war for a share of their army, navy, and air XP. It fills slowly over time, the rate of which depends on your national spirits, doctrines, and world tension. Your army, navy, and air XPs have a variety of uses. The most important being designing your unit templates and adding upgrades to your vehicles, ships, and aircraft. You also need this XP to unlock upgrades to your military doctrines, which give huge buffs to your combat capabilities, so don't neglect these. You primarily gain this XP by combat. The type of unit will dictate which XP you gain. For example, your British Spitfires shooting down German planes over the English Channel will only give you air XP. 
You also gain a small amount from training your divisions, uh, Navy and Air Force, so it can be a great way of getting some upgrades done during peacetime. Okay, now cast your eyes to the top right of the screen, and you'll see the in-game date, as well as the plus and minus buttons. This controls the in-game speed. A much easier way of controlling this is with the plus and minus keys on your keypad, as well as the spacebar to pause and unpause the game. If you click on the date, it will pause and unpause the game. Keeping in mind that this guide is for new players, you can ignore the music, main menu, and help buttons. You can always reach the menu by hitting escape anyway. One cool thing though, is if you click on the trophy, you can see which achievements are currently available to you as your selected country. Just below the game speed section, you'll see the buttons for the army, navy, and air force overviews, which will give you a list of all your divisions, ships, and air squadrons. This can be particularly handy if you've misplaced a bomber squadron somewhere or can't remember where you left your heavy tank divisions. It's not commonly used, but it is good to know. To the right of this, you have the world tension meter. This reflects how spooked the nations of the world are by events that have occurred, such as wars breaking out, annexing other countries, or justifying war goals. You can hover over this to see who has contributed to this figure. It also influences how likely neutral nations are to join in on a larger conflict against an aggressive player or country. This number is more important for some nations than others, with some political focuses being locked behind the current world tension level. If you're playing as a democracy, this could very well be you. Now, down in the bottom right, you have a little panel, which will show you a lot of useful information that you'll need to know. Again, keeping in mind that you're a beginner, we'll stick with the important ones. The soldier icon will turn the world map to the army view, which is what you're seeing now. The default hotkey for this is F1. This will show you where all of your land units are, exactly where they are on the map, as well as give you a general idea of borders, terrains, ports, etc. This is pretty much the default map mode, so if your screen looks weird, just press F1 and it'll bring you back to the army view. The anchor icon, or F2, will take you into the naval view. This will show the naval regions that your ships operate in, as well as any missions that you have active ongoing battles and battle results, as well as the overseas supply routes, which are shown by these white dotted lines. This is where your convoys take supplies from the mainland, linked to your capital, to all of your troops fighting elsewhere that aren't connected by that land supply. Next, the plane icon, or F3 hotkey, will show you the air zone map view. Air and naval zones are the same. However, air zones don't match up with the land states as shown in the army view, which can be a little confusing at first. You can see these uh, outlines here. So the main use of this view is to easily see your airports and air squadrons, as well as any regions that your planes are operating in and your supremacy in said regions. The last important map mode to know about for a newbie is the supply view, which is a brand new to the game with the release of the No Step Back DLC. There's a tiny little button here but the easiest and quickest way to access this is by clicking F4. Actually, if you hold down Alt and then press F4, it will keep the logistics tab overlaid with your other map views. Let me know in the comments if you tried that and it worked for you. But anyway, I have another video going over the supply in more depth, uh, but all you need to know for now is how to view it. So again, quick summary, F1 for the army view, F2 for the navy view, F3 for the air view, and F4 for your logistics. A quick tip here, if you do want to see a specific type of map overlay, you can click this little pop-out arrow, and it will show you all the different options that you can go through and explore on your own. At the very bottom, there's a few overlay options which will change how the map looks. I would recommend having the unit counters set to all, so you can see where your enemies are, and how many of them, not just your own. Also, turning off the day and night cycle can make the game run smoother, and the rest of these are pretty much personal preference. Now we will quickly go over your different menus you have access to before touching on the notifications that pop up. I won't go too in-depth with each one of these, as they all really merit a deeper breakdown, but let's get you started with the main one, the nation's political menu, accessed by your country's flag in the top left. So here you can see your nation's leader, what buffs and traits they have by hovering over their name or portrait. Uh, Mussolini doesn't have any, get good bro. Uh, you can see your current political focus being researched, any national spirits your country has, as well as uh, what buffs or debuffs they give, your government type, your party popularity, 
as well as your laws uh, cabinet, any production or research designers, and your military staff. Next, we have the decisions menu, where you can enact a huge range of policies or take political actions, as well as react to different events as they occur throughout the world. You can turn off the notification for these by hitting the little green dot here next to the decision, or you can turn off a whole category by clicking the dot in the heading. Most of these will use your PP, so keep an eye out for if you have some banked up and see if there's anything in here that you can do to help your nation. Next is the research menu, where you can see what your scientists are working on and how many days until completion. Again, you want these to be running constantly. As soon as you finish one tech, start another, as you don't want to waste any days that you could be researching something. They don't actually cost you anything except for time, so go nuts. Next is the diplomacy menu. To be honest, you can ignore this one. A much easier way of interacting with other countries is to left click on them to deselect any units that you might have selected, then right click, which will bring up their diplomacy profile. So this is where you can declare wars, join their faction, or send volunteers. Next is the trade menu, which is super important for your production. As you can see here at the top, it will show you how many civilian factories you have available, and they are used for trade. So if you need a resource, you will gain the rubber, the aluminium, oil, whatever. And the country that you trade with will gain one of your civilian factories until you cancel the trade. The main thing to keep an eye on here is if any of your resources are in the negative, you want to trade that resource. When your resources are green in the positive, then you're maximizing your production. Next is the construction menu. This is where you build anything at a state or province level. This is a super complex part of the game and there's a lot of different factors to take into account and it certainly warrants a video of its own. The key things to see here are the different types of buildings available on the right. The green factories are for building military equipment. The orange ones are needed so you can build more things. And the blue ones build your boats. So start with that and see how you go. Now we have the production menu. This is where you assign your military factories and dockyards to building fun things like tanks or guns or trains or planes or boats or whatever things your army needs to win. Each of these bits is called a production line and you can assign one equipment type per line. At the top of the menu you can also see if you lack any resources which you, think you can then click on to take you through to the trade menu. The game has also split up the different equipment into army, tanks, aircraft, and Navy. Super easy. For now, you can ignore all the other buttons and numbers and everything here and just focus on this. In the recruitment menu, this is where you can actually train and deploy your land units, and these are obviously the bulk of your army. On the right, you can see the different division templates that you have access to, with the division being one single unit on the map. If you click edit, like I did just here, you can actually change the name, uh, the design of the division, as well as the icon and other cool things. So you remember the army experience that we talked about earlier? So this is where you actually use it to change your divisions and make them stronger. The little clipboard here is the logistics tab. This will show you any equipment that you have in stockpile, or if the number's red, any equipment that you're in deficit that you're lacking to arm your troops. The menu is handy as a reference, but you don't have to check it constantly. Finally, the Officer core is where you can use all that Army, Air and Navy XP you've been saving up and upgrade your doctrines through these buttons here. You can elect commanders to each of your branches as well as advisors, which are also shown in the political tab uh, down the bottom here. All of this is important to increase the effectiveness of your armed forces and how they fight, so be sure to check on this and fill out the doctrines as quick as you can. Perfect. Now, to the right of those menus, you can see these little icons, which show that you have actions that need taking. I know we've been through a lot today, but remember, as a new player, the main thing you really need to worry about is actioning these notifications. For example, there's a lot here at the start of the game, so take five minutes or so to sort them out. You can decide how you're going to steer your nation, what techs you'll queue up, what focuses you'll do, how you'll use your factories. I won't go through each of these individually, if you hover over each one, they'll actually tell you why they're there, and if you left click on it, it will take you through to the relevant menu. Alrighty, so now it's time for the bonus tip, and I know I said it's only one, but I thought of another while making this video, so it's your lucky day. Did you know that when the little red man icon shows up at the top here, showing that you've got unassigned divisions, you can hold shift and left click on him, and it will select every single division that's unassigned. So you can pop them in an army group, and then they're all there, ready for you to do with as you please. 
And then the other tip is you can split orders between a single general by, firstly, you place your original frontline order wherever you want. Then you place a secondary frontline order, which you can see doesn't have any divisions assigned to it. But if you actually select the divisions that you want to go to that new frontline, hold left control and click on it, they will make their way there and bang, you've got two front lines under the same general. Okay, so I hope that gives you a pretty good understanding of all the UI elements you need to know as a new player in Hearts of Iron 4. I hope you found it helpful and entertaining, and if you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing to see when I post new videos. I also stream on Twitch, my link's in the description, so please stop by and say good day, and I'll see you in the next one.